Alright, hi guys, and welcome back to part 2 of my sprite animation tutorial series. Today I'll be showing y'all how to optimize your Flash document to get it prepped and ready so we can start animating. Now you probably opened your fresh new Flash document canvas and you probably think to yourself, it's time to get to animating. But there are a few key things that I think we're going to change first before we start getting into it. First off, down on the properties panel, you'll definitely want to change the frame rate to anywhere between 24 to 30 frames a second. Possibly 60 if you're willing to go that high. The FPS will determine how quickly the flash will play the frames in the timeline and in the final animation. As such, depending on what you choose, you'll either need to add more or less frames to certain poses and keyframes to make them slower or faster respectively. In this window, you can also change the background color of your stage. My personal preference is to have a nice, cool, bluish gray color, as not many colors will blend in with this tone, making it clearer for me to see the sprites, easier to see the background pixels that might have gotten left behind, and more importantly, not strain my eyes for staring at it for hours on end. Finally, you'll want to change your canvas size. I used to have it at a 4x3 aspect ratio for years, because I never really thought it mattered. While it still technically doesn't matter, we're in a day and age where people expect a proper 16x9 aspect ratio from most media. So it's probably a safe idea to just choose a resolution that fits a 16x9 aspect ratio. My preference is an 854x480 resolution. It's basically 480p. Don't worry so much about your canvas size being such a small resolution, because remember, Flash is a vector-based program. When we go to convert the final SWF animation in Swivel, if we tend to hopefully upscale that to 1080p or maybe higher, there's not going to be any quality loss. Vectors are able to be scaled up without any image degradation. You can set these to be the default settings every time you open Flash by pressing the Make Default button down at the bottom of the window. Next, we're going to go over to the Publish settings. There's not really much to change here, but a few things that will make your export product all the more cleaner. Specifically, we're going to be messing with audio stream and event settings. My advice is that you either change these to an MP3 with 160 kilobits per second and the quality to best. Or, and this is my preferred method, the compression set to raw and sample rate to 44 hertz. Having it set that way has it just that little bit clearer for me. You'll also want to uncheck the convert stereo to mono when you change these settings. And then press OK. You'll also want to check mark the box next to Override Sound Settings. This will make it so whatever audio files you import into your Flash document will play at this audio quality when you export the SWF, without you having to actually manually change the sound files yourself in your library. Which, we'll get to that when we need to start importing sound into our finished animation. And finally, my personal preference is to always change the JPEG quality to 100. I do that because if I'm going to use an image and I can't find a clear PNG of it, and I have to use a JPEG, it's best in my opinion to get the best image quality you can out of that. And then you're pretty much done with the publish settings. Now, to my knowledge, there's no way to have these settings be consistently the same for every time you open up a new Flash document, like your canvas or frames per second. However, you can't always export the settings and re-import them whenever you make a new Flash file, but quite frankly, it's just an extra task, and since I already have the panel open, I can just change the settings manually anyway. And to my knowledge, that's really all there is to setting up your flash file to get everything ready to animate. Of course, you can always move and alter your panels in flash to fit your workflow, change the size of the keyframes in your timeline, but that all really boils down to you and how you like to organize your workspace. And in the next tutorial, we're going to be looking at the optimal ways to import your sprites into flash. We're not going to be so much looking at different programs, though I am going to mention a few, but I am strictly going to be showing one program, since they all seem to really function the same. Anyway, I hope you're all ready to get started into more practical things for animating. This has been more of the under the hood type stuff that needs to be changed. But just always remember to keep practicing, and more importantly, have fun.